Tonight's video is about a park ranger's encounter on the Appalachian Trail searching for a missing person from a group in the state of West Virginia. Then our second story is about some Boy Scouts who are venturing off into the woods at night and what the encounter is horrifying. Then our third story is about this woman who was taking a night hike in the back of her property in a wooded area, but she was not alone. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up and tell a friend. Now let's get spooky. I was on the Appalachian Trail, searching for a young individual who was reported missing a few hours prior to my sighting. Now, I am a park ranger here in the state of West Virginia, and I have been here for the past three and a half years. And the sighting that I have, surprisingly, doesn't surprise me. The Appalachian Trail is over 2,000 miles of footpath across the central valleys of the Appalachian Mountains. It is the longest hiking trail globally in the world. It is a perfect location for short-term hikers for a weekend getaway, along for experienced hikers who think that they got what it takes. The trail crosses through the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area, Green Mountains, the White Mountain National Forest, and so on. I was out here looking for this individual who had been reporting missing on this trail from a group of their friends that had reported it to us. By the time that I had found this person, they were right off the path, ducked hiding behind some tree and brush, crying hysterically. I found this person by accident. The only reason why I did find them, not only was I screaming that person's name, but I could hear the sobbing and wailing in the distance. Now, when I found this person, it was already about 7.30 p.m. in the evening and the sun had already set. It was cold outside, and this person was completely terrified. As to why, I didn't quite know. When I first reached the person, I went through the standard protocol of asking them how they got there, are they alright, and what had happened, and I'm going to help them to get back to the trail and to get back to safety. He refused to move. Shaking, huddled up against the tree trunk on the floor, refusing to get up or even move for that matter. This guy barely would speak. Now this is a grown man in his mid-thirties, crying hysterically, screaming about he saw it and it was following him. At first I thought he was just seeing things. Maybe he was drunk or he was hallucinating on some drugs. And after a few minutes of trying to settle him down, he started to speak a little more coherent. He told me that there was this large black shadow that was following him up above in the sky. And at first I thought maybe it was just an eagle, or maybe some type of other bird-like animal that this spooked him. Something larger than usual, plus it was already dark outside. He told me this thing that was in the sky following him was not a bird. It was some type of creature. It had large wings and red glowing eyes and it seemed like it glided and floated more than it did fly. He had said that this thing had chased him and he was running for dear life for several minutes until he was winded and he ran off trail to hide under the trees. At that point, he was hysterical and balled himself up and just waited for help. Luckily, I had found him as it was getting cold outside and it was already nighttime, and the fact that he had been out here with just a minor sweat jacket was not good for his health. I finally got him to rise to his feet. It took several minutes to get him back onto the trail. As we started walking towards the direction of the entrance to where he had started his hike with his group, after a few moments, we started hearing these weird noises from behind us. I would casually look behind us thinking it may be some other hikers or maybe just some local wildlife. But no, when I had looked up into the sky, I had seen this black silhouette that he had referenced about. It was this giant man in the sky with these huge wings that looked to be at least four to five feet wide on each side of his body. His eyes did glow some type of red crimson color and it was following us casually. It wasn't attacking, 
More like a curiosity, like it was following us. I don't know why, but it was. This thing was way bigger than he had mentioned. At least, to my viewpoint, it seemed larger than five feet. This thing's wingspan was five feet. Its body was more than that. At this point, it started getting closer, and it started making these weird noises that echoed in the air. At this point, fight or flight kicked in. I grabbed this guy, and I told him to run as fast as he could. We both took off running into a sprint down the trail as this thing started gaining on us. I don't know how many minutes that we ran side by side parallel with one another, making sure that this guy didn't get lost again if he was to run off trail and into the brush and disappearing. We eventually came across more park rangers than the group that had been walking on the trail, heading in the direction we were running from. They all had flashlights and headlamps on, and once we reached them, we were completely out of breath, heart pounding in my chest, and about to collapse. When we had turned around to point in the direction of this flying creature, to show them what the hell had been chasing us, there was nothing there in the sky. It was as if we both had hallucinated the same thing. We had both imagined this mythological creature known as what I would call as the Mothman. I always thought the Mothman only resided in a certain part of West Virginia. I have never seen any real cryptids through my whole career as a park ranger, let alone in my whole life. I thought they were just legends. Today, I went back to my parents' house to get a few things before heading off to college. I was looking for a few things when I found an old container under my bed. I pulled it out and opened it out of curiosity. When I opened it, it had all my Game Boy Advanced games and under a pile of games was my Midnight Black Game Boy. I picked it up and saw its screen was slightly cracked in the corner. Suddenly, I had a flood of haunting memories. So today, I will be sharing those haunting memories with all of you. When I was 10, I went to Boy Scouts. My dad forced me to join because he was a troop leader. He was obsessed with nature and spent every second outdoors he possibly could. Unfortunately, he and I did not share a common interest. So when I turned 10, my dad signed me up and told me two days before we went to Boy Scouts. He wanted to spend time bonding. We started to pack our things and against my dad's wishes, I secretly packed my Midnight Black Game Boy Advance and two games, Pokemon Fire Red and Metroid Prime. I stuffed them inside my sleeping bag just in case my dad checked my backpack. After packing all my stuff, dad checked my backpack to make sure I didn't forget anything. My plan worked, and he didn't find my secret treasure of entertainment. We headed to the truck, and Dad started it. We went to the gas station, and after fueling up the truck with gas, we went inside. Dad let me get a treat, and I got a chocolate bar, and Dad got a coffee. After the trip to the gas station, we went down a road I recognized. We were heading to my cousin's. I was so excited. Even though my cousin Jay was three years older than me, we got along just fine. We were like PB and J. When we got to Jay's house, we parked on the driveway. Jay ran out to the house and got into the truck. Be safe, Jay's mother yelled to us. My father said we would be safe. Even though there was no one in the front seat, Jay sat in the back right next to me. He had blonde curly hair that laid on the right side and the left side was shaved. He said how excited he was to see me. Even though I and Jay are in different age groups, at the start of summer for the first week, all scouts of different age groups got together. When we pulled up, we parked by the other cars. Jay split up from us for a little bit to his group. We met the rest of the group. We would set up camp that wasn't too far from the road. After all the activities and the sun started to set, we were all set in our camps. I would sleep with my dad since he was the troop leader of our group. I was waiting for my dad to fall asleep so I could play on my Game Boy. Eventually, 
I closed my eyes and fell asleep. I jolted awake when I heard the loud snap of a branch breaking. My dad was still sleeping. He was a very heavy sleeper. I slowly walked out with a flashlight in my hand. I turned it on and went out, and a hand covered my mouth muffled my scream. I heard a familiar voice say, It's just me. It was Jay. They said they wanted to walk around and wondered if I wanted to tag along. I decided I would and went back into the tent and quietly grabbed my Game Boy and put on my shoes. When we got past camp, he introduced me to his friends. This is John, Andrew, and Dave, he said. John was a lanky dude with long arms and legs. Andrew was the opposite. He was short and bulky and was very buff. Dave, on the other hand, was an average Joe. We walked near the hill the road was on till we came across a tunnel. I pulled my midnight black Game Boy out. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my games. I probably wouldn't be able to see the screen anyways. I disappointingly put my Game Boy Advance into my pocket. The rest of the group decided we would go into the tunnel. I didn't want to go into the tunnel, but I didn't want to seem like a scaredy cat. So we turned on our flashlights and went into the tunnel. If I knew what was there, I would have never gone in and would have ran back to the truck. We walked for what felt like hours, when in reality it had only been a couple of minutes. When I smelt something horrible, I couldn't describe it, but it was the worst thing I had ever smelled. Eventually, I saw a lump. We got closer, and it... It was a deer carcass. I will not describe it in great detail, but it traumatized me. I let out a whimper, and Jay seemed to notice that and said that we should turn back. So we did, when we heard footsteps behind us. We turned around to see a large dark figure behind us. It was tall with long antlers, but that's all I could make out of it. It let out a deep roar. It started to pursue. We all started to run. I ran as fast as I could. I tripped and fell under a fallen log. I did not hear its footsteps, but when I rolled over on my side, my face was filled with fear as I heard the Game Boy Advance startup noise. Then I heard its roar. I looked everywhere. Then I saw a hole in the log, and I was small enough to crawl inside. My Game Boy Advance fell out of my pocket onto a rock, cracking its screen. Then I heard its footsteps. The footsteps got farther and farther. I waited for what felt like an hour before I crawled out and grabbed my Game Boy and stuffed it into my pocket. I ran back to my tent. I couldn't fall asleep. The next day I ran into Jay and his friends. Luckily, no one was hurt. We all agreed not to tell anyone of this incident ever. I'm telling you this now to warn you to never bring a Game Boy to Boy Scouts. This is about four or five years ago, back when I lived with my mother in a shed on a farm surrounded by woodland. Our farmland was part of a large piece of farmland that was split up and sold off. So we did have neighbors though they were roughly half a kilometer away each. We loved that because of privacy. It wasn't like there wasn't nobody around that I couldn't go to if I needed help. That thought is what kept me fearless walking alone at night between the hours of 7 and 8 p.m., sometimes fluctuating from earlier to later depending on the day. Sometimes I even went on a walk at 2 a.m. in the morning because I was restless and couldn't sleep. Looking back, this was incredibly stupid, and after this incident, I never walked after 6 p.m. ever again, always making sure there was at least some sunlight left when I set out. The route I always took was a road circuit. The first part was out in the open in front of all the other farms, including my own. If anything had happened, at least one person would have noticed, and reception was pretty good, so I would have been able to call someone. The second half, on the other hand, was concealed for about 200 meters of woods between the farms and the back road, 
stretching the full two kilometers of the back of the farm, and it was during that part of the walk when I had this creepy encounter. It was late at night. I can't remember what time exactly, but it was pitch black with the exception of my torchlight. I was about to approach the turn in the loop that would bring me out into the open again when I heard it. Help. It was this monotone voice that repeatedly asked for help. It didn't seem panicked in the least. I took my headphones out and turned my music off to make sure I was hearing correctly, but it didn't stop. Help. Help. A very stupid part of me almost responded, because for some reason my first instinct was, oh no, someone's in trouble, like a naive kid even though I would have been 16 or 17 at the time. Of course, then my brain kicked in, and I realized that approaching that voice was just about the stupidest thing I could do, so I started quickly backing away. Unfortunately, my cat followed me on the walk and wasn't backing away with me. No, she was walking towards the voice, softly hissing. I remember desperately trying to get her to come back towards me without alerting the voice to my presence just in case they hadn't noticed me yet. But I was getting scared and didn't want to stay there a moment more, so I ran forwards and grabbed her, then turned around and bolted back towards my house. I don't know if it was stupid of me to turn my back to the voice, as I was making so much noise while running that there was no way that they didn't know that I was there, and I had no way of knowing if they were giving chase. I was so freaking terrified that whole time, the image of someone cloaked in shadows chasing me entering my mind, and even though I couldn't hear anyone behind me, I never once slowed down until I was back safe and sound within my house. It didn't end there though. Despite how terrifying it was, there was still a part of me that was concerned about whoever it was, because what if they really had needed help? So I asked my mother to drive us to the location, Another very stupid decision considering what we found. That being nothing, we called out and called out, but nobody answered. We didn't get out of the car, though. Luckily, neither of us were that stupid. We drove home, having seen nothing and no one. But it still bothered me, and in the morning I had my mother drive us over again. And we searched the whole immediate area. Nothing. No indication that anyone had been there. There was no body, which admittedly was a drastic thing to search for, but I know shock can leave you eerily calm which could have explained the monotone voice, and the lack of response afterwards made me fear that we had been too late and we had find a body in the morning. I don't know if I would have preferred this outcome, because at least then I would have had a face to the voice. But no, we found absolutely nothing and to this day, I have no idea who that voice belonged to, and why they were monotonously calling out for help. My mind has naturally came to some chilling conclusions and theories that leave me unable to sleep. Rapists, kidnappers, serial killers, all the classic horror stories. But I guess I'll never really know for sure. <laughs>